Hey, what's up guys? Coach Rocky here, the official trainer for I Love Basketball TV, and today I have a very, very special treat for you. So, the other day I was talking with one of my good friends, Andy McCloy. He is the owner of BCI Sports Performance in Madison, Alabama, and Andy is one of the best performance coaches in the world, in my opinion, and in the last 16 years, he's dedicated his life to kind of developing elite athleticism, and he's worked with some of the best athletes in all of professional sports. And over the next few weeks, he's going to be bringing you guys amazing information on vertical jump, basketball strength training, um, nutrition, everything you need kind of other than basketball skills. I want to continue to bring you guys the best of the best, and Andy is the best of the best when it comes to developing um, strength, um, endurance, um, your vertical jump, being healthy, having good nutrition, staying healthy on the court, all of those things. So I'm proud to bring Andy to the channel and I'm so happy that he can come and teach you some things that you need to know to become a better athlete. But enough talking, um, let me introduce Andy to you guys and let's get into his video so you can learn from him. Hey guys, my name is Andy McCloy. I'm the owner of BCI Sports Performance and Fitness. I'm here today to show you guys the top five exercises that all basketball players should be doing. You probably assume, like most, that all these exercises should be focused on your lower body, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. In order to be an elite basketball player, you need to be strong from head to toe. So we're going to show you our big five that we start all basketball players out at, regardless of their fitness level. I'm going to bring in Dale Boyd. Dale's going to come on in for a second, and he's going to show you guys our first exercise, and maybe the most important of them all. We're going to start with a kettlebell deadlift. So I'm going to have Dale grab this kettlebell and get set. I want you to remember this. We always want to get in the right position before we move. Just like shooting a free throw, your position always matters before you start. So I want him to start with his feet aligned with the kettlebell. You can think inside ankle bone in line with the handle of the bell. From here, Dale's going to have soft knees and then hinge backwards. From this point, he's going to reach over and grab a hold of the bell and think about breaking the bell. A couple key points is we want a relatively vertical shin. I want hips higher than knees, but I want shoulders higher than hips, and I want neck in this neutral position. From here, Dale will breathe in through his nose, tighten his abs, and then exhale and stand up and complete the movement. From here, he'll reverse the movement, driving his hips backwards, keeping his neck in neutral, and he'll continue to repeat this using that same breathing rhythm, inhaling on the way down, exhaling on the way up. Very good. Kettlebell deadlift is a great exercise to strengthen the entire posterior chain hamstrings, glutes, and low back. We also need to be strong though on the front side of our body relative to our lower extremities. So we need something for our quadriceps as well. One of my favorite squatting exercises is the goblet squat. So I'm gonna have Dale get and grab this lighter kettlebell here. Which this one weighs about 35 pounds and may be a good starting point for some of you, but be okay with starting lighter. It's always okay to start light. So I'm gonna have Dale get his feet set and get the bell in what we call the goblet position. So he's holding it by the horns with his elbows directly underneath of his wrist. He's got his feet set up about shoulder width apart and toes slightly turned out. Dale is going to inhale through his nose and sit straight down into this exercise and then exhale and stand back up. Give me a couple more reps, Dale. If he continues to hit the right depth, not only is he going to hit his quads, but he's going to hit his entire leg musculature. By holding the bell in front of him, he's also getting a lot of stimulus for his core as well. So this squat is also making his core stronger. Very good. The kettlebell goblet squat is an incredible lower body exercise. Now that we've shown you two uh, lower body exercises, we're going to show you our top two upper body exercises. We're going to start with a kettlebell row. So Dale's going to go ahead and grab this lighter bell here, and he's going to get set up just like he did for the hinge or the kettlebell deadlift. So his feet are going to be shoulder width apart. He's hinging backwards, making sure he has a nice vertical shin. He's squeezing that opposite fist to create tension throughout his whole body, and to anchor it into his position. From here, he's gonna breathe in through his nose, and now he'll exhale in a row. Pausing here for a brief second, and then going lower and reaching again, and then rowing again. When we row, we don't wanna rotate our torso. We wanna think about reaching long without rotating. Very good. Kettlebell row is a great exercise to work all the muscles on the back side of your upper body. Your lats are heavily involved when it comes to the power of your passes, heavily involved when it comes to shooting range. So you have to have a strong back. The next exercise we're going to show you guys is the good old push-up. Now most people think they know how to do push-ups, and most people completely butcher push-ups every time they do them. So we're going to show you a foolproof way to get set up for your push-up, 
and then I'm going to have Dale knock out a couple perfect push-ups for you. So first, we like to start in this position that we call the quadruped position. He's on all fours, spine is in neutral. From here, he's going to extend one leg and lock it. He'll then extend the other and lock it. The areas of vulnerability for a push-up are ankles, knees, hips, shoulder blades, and neck. So we're making sure that he's drawing his chin backwards. We're not slacking here. Show them what that would look like. We're really in neutral. Come on back up. Good. This is another area where people slack. Can you drop there? We definitely don't want this. Come on back up in neutral. Show them what breaking at the knees looks like. We definitely don't want that either. Go ahead and lock it out. So I want to maintain the integrity of this position. Dale's going to inhale through his nose and lower himself down by pulling his shoulder blades together. And then he'll exhale on the way back up, continuing to think about driving his upper back to the ceiling above. He'll inhale again and lower himself. Exhale, back up. Now, Dale's elbows are in the shape of a V or an arrow. Most people do push-ups in a T. We want to avoid the T position and always go with an arrow. Great job. And you stay right there for me because we're going to go right in to the plank. The plank is one of our favorite core exercises. Like the push-up, many people think they do it correctly, yet they butcher it over and over and over again. If you think you can hold a 7 to 10 minute plank, you're probably doing it wrong. I would recommend you start off with 30 second holds with a goal of being 2 minutes. Beyond 2 minutes, we need to come up with some other strategies to intensify the exercise. So just like getting set up for the push-up, Dale is going to go down into the quadruped position, but drop his forearms to the ground and engage the ground with his hands. He'll extend one leg and lock it, extend the other and lock it. Focusing on those same areas of vulnerability, we're going to make sure our ankles are locked, knees. I'm going to go ahead and have him lower just a little bit here. We're not losing it here, and his neck is in a great position. Planks are one of the best exercises to reinforce the integrity of the entire torso and body. Very good. All right, guys, thanks for your time. Those are our big five exercises. If any of you guys have questions about how to progress these, how to regress these, or other options that may be available to you, go ahead and just drop something in the comments. And if you don't mind, do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe to our channel because we're going to be bringing you guys a lot of good information as it relates to getting better for basketball. Peace. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you could take something with you, um, something off the court, and still become a better player. Um, hit the weight room, work on your nutrition, improve your vertical jump, all those things. As a matter of fact, I have a free vertical jump training workout for you um, that can enhance your vertical jump even more. Just click this button right here, or if you're on mobile, click that first link in the description, freaktraining.com slash VJA. That's going to take you to a page. You just put in your email, and I'll instantly send you over that workout so you can start jumping higher today. As always, please, please hit that like button. If you enjoyed Andy, you want to see him back, hit that like button. If you want to learn more about sports, um, performance, nutrition, endurance, vertical jump, anything, leave in the co comment section below. I'll try to get to it, or I can tell Andy to get to it. Um, and yeah, you know, we're going to keep these videos coming. As always, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. We're almost at a million subscribers. Let's get it.